back to All Good Things. I'm Corey, that's my co-host Gary the Gnome, and Gary would like to remind you all, no Debbie Downers. Starting off the show will be our weird fact of the day. Chickens have extensive communication skills. According to the Humane Society of the United States, before they hatch, chickens start peeping to their mothers, who respond with soothing sounds. When given space to forage, roosters keep watch over chickens and have different calls to let their ladies know where the best food is, alert them when danger is present, or tell them when it is time to return to the coop. Now that is excellent. Now we will move into our all good news. A customer of a Denver barbershop left a $2,500 tip to his hairstylist last Saturday in addition to his $27 haircut. But the generous tipster didn't stop there. GoodMorningAmerica.com says he handed the barbershop's receptionist $500 and $1,000 to the general manager on his way out before doubling back to ask how many people worked at the shop. He then doled out an additional $1,800 $100 for each of the shop's 18 other employees. Gary, you could be doing generous things like that, but you're too busy staying at home growing your quarantine beard. Now, before we get into our all-good spotlight, Gary and I present to you a two-for-one chicken special. Frizzle chickens. The characteristic of a frizzle chicken is calm and gentle. They are often quiet and sometimes become lap chickens. And finally, we have our All Good Spotlight. Today we have a special guest, someone who has been working with the Walt Disney Company for several years, a movie and TV fanatic, and a huge Disney collectibles and theme park enthusiast. Please welcome my very special friend, Drew Hayashida. Hi, Drew! Well, hello! Hi! Um, thank you for joining me on the show. Sure. It was a lot of fun. Um, and it's good to see you. It's very good to see you. How have you been doing? I've been doing fine. Um, as you can see, growing a beard. <laughs> so for your viewers, uh, this is all new. I never had this before. I've never grown a beard in my life. And um, this is my first beard. I'm, and I'm getting fat. But thankfully, this screen is only this big, so you can't <laughs> see my big, fat Elvis belly. But uh, uh, otherwise, it's doing fine. I, I lose track of days. I think that's pretty common. Like, what day of the week it is. I have to look it up. <laughs> Well, um, so I just have a few questions for you today. Um, so I love seeing your posts about your mugs. And so when did you start collecting them and how many do you have? I don't have a number. Um, I have so many. Um, when did I start collecting? So, I mean, I'm obviously an older guy and I moved out of the house when I was 21. Um, I think I had a couple of mugs at that time, but I think it really boomed when I started working at Disneyland and, uh, you know, got an employee discount and, uh, I, and it wasn't like I was collecting them per se. I just would see a mug that I thought was cool or it represented my favorite movie or uh, somebody gifted me. Like today, I need a lot of coffee. So I have my big old uh, Pixar ball mug today. Um, with great coffee in it. <laughs> mm. um, so I, and uh, like I have an entire box of just uh, holiday mugs. Right. And, uh, I mean, and that's easily 20, you know, and then, um, and then I, I've got to have at least two or three times that beyond that. So I'm going to say over a hundred, probably more than that. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot. That makes me scared. <laughs> so which ones are your favorite mugs? Like you have a bunch of different ones, some that change um, designs and some that are just for your fun or the design, but which one's like your favorite one? Favorite mug? Uh, I, you know, it depends on my mood. Um, I have a cauldron mug for Harry Potter, mm -hmm. which uh, is a favorite. I have a Beatles mug. I'm a big Beatles fan. It has a bunch of uh, images of uh, the Beatles on it and um, a gazillion Disney mugs that I just really think are cool. Like this Pixar one is one of the biggest mugs I've ever had. I mean, it's almost as big as my head, you know, like I can hide behind it. It's touching my nose. So um, it's huge. Star Wars mugs are pretty cool. Um, you know, I have one that I got at Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland. And, uh, and then I have another mug that's one of those heat up mugs. So when you heat it up, an image from Star Wars comes up. Uh, that's a favorite one, and uh... I actually have 
three Thanos mugs, but my favorite is uh, it looks like his glove. Look, when you put your hand in it, it looks like your hand is the uh, Thanos hand. But so I, I just I don't know. It it, it depends on my mood, and uh, what I sometimes it depends on what I'm doing that day. Like if I'm, uh, you know, giving a tour and uh, somebody I somebody in the group I know is a big, you know. Uh, uh, Toy Story fan, then I'll bring out the. I have a Toy Story mug that I got. The friend gave me from Tokyo Disneyland. It's really cool. It's got sketches uh, of Woody and Buzz and and things around it. So I would drink that. It, I know it's weird, but it just kind of gets my in me in the mindset right. of whatever's going on. This one is purely practical. I just needed a lot of coffee, so this is the biggest one of the biggest mugs I have, and I just and it's fun. It's fun looking. So. Right, yeah. So. Um, people also aren't able to go to amusement parks and theme parks like Disneyland. So how much do you miss getting to go to the Disney park? Well, I'm wearing my Disneyland shirt. I don't know if you can see. It's uh, designed by Jared, and it's got some of the iconic imagery uh, mm -hmm. from the parks. So that should tell you something. I really miss it. Um, I had a friend ask me not too long ago, what uh, was the first thing you're going to do when Disneyland opens? You know, so I... Again, for your viewers, I live in California, so and I live 20 minutes away from the Disneyland Resort here. And um, I, you know, it's funny. It's like so many people say, "Oh, I'm going to ride pirates," and you know, "I'm going to do Haunted Mansion." And I, um, I can't wait. I can't wait just to go through the gates and go under that overpass, you know, the railroad train. Uh, before you get into Main Street, uh, that wonderful sign, here you leave today and uh, yeah. enter the realm. You know, and just to walk through that overpass and to see Sleeping Beauty Castle. I mean, I just, I can't wait to do that. Um, and I'm just going to stand there and soak it in for a couple of minutes. Like it just, yeah, you know, so I, that's the first thing I can't wait to do. Uh, in fact, so if I can talk about this for just a brief minute. I know you don't have a lot of time, but um, we're here. The reason why this, this is not a backdrop. This is my real storage room. <laughs> <laughs> my house does not look like this. It's If you watch the show Friends, Monica's clo hidden closet that has all her crap in it, even though she's a neat person. This is my Monica's closet, but I call it the dungeon because we're down here uh, at the garage level. My condo is up here. Mm -hmm. And um, and this is where I do, I actually do a podcast. So this is, you're on a professional mic. Um and uh, it's quiet down here, and it's private because I have a roommate, and I, I don't like to disturb them. Um, and, but also, this is where I have so many uh, collections of things. Like we were just talking about parks. This is what made me think of it. You asked me about parks. I have a lot of pins. I have a lot of pins. I'm not a pin collector. I know that sounds crazy. I don't trade pins or anything. I just buy pins that I happen to like. But through the years, I have two file boxes full of pins. By the way, they're metal. They're very heavy. Uh, cardboard file box is not a good thing. Anyway, so uh, this is one of my favorites. This is a cast member exclusive. Uh, let me see if you can see it. Yeah, cast member exclusive set. And it's got that retro Disneyland look. And this is one of my favorite pin sets ever. And um, so I have wacky stuff like that down here. Oh, wait a minute. I got to show you this. Wait, you're going to cut this out. That's fine. But you guys see this. Um, I found this. So this came out, this is a bank. Um, wow. A little slot on the side. Mm -hmm. And it's Grandmother Willow. Uh, some of the, you know, the leaves have fallen off. But uh, this goes all the way back to the 90s, right? When Pocahontas came out. Mm -hmm. But check this out. Is that my Pocahontas? Grandmother Willow, what is my time? How am I ever going to find it? All around you, I'm doing a child. They will you. <laughs> That's so cool that it moved. <laughs> and, and it's funny, I've only changed the batteries once in the, you know, however many years I've had it. So it's, it's got staying power. Anyway, so that's where we're at. And um, yeah, so Disneyland, I definitely, yeah. I miss. I miss and I can't wait to. How about you? Like, I bet you can't wait to go back to the parks. Right. I want to go see the new Star Wars land. That I didn't get to see that. I went oh. with my marching, I went with my jazz band when they were making it. And so um, we didn't get to go. Yeah, I, I mean, you got it. Like right after this, you got to come out here and go to Disneyland, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. All right, thanks, Corey. And I meant it anytime. So if you if you want me back on, just uh, just let me know. We'll work it out. Um, 
And uh, yeah, if you want to see any more of the collections, let me know too. I have a lot of wacky stuff. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Take care. Gore. Please say hi to the family for me. Okay? okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. Take care. That's all we have for you today. Don't forget to check out our new Instagram page at allgoodthings underscore 2020. If you would like to see us on Facebook, make sure you comment below along with what you liked and disliked about the show. I'm Corey, that's Gary, and nobody knows when we'll see you next.